Our next panel is in partnership with the Greater Houston Community Foundation and its Next Generation Family Philanthropy Perspectives. And it's going to be moderated by Renee Wizig Barrios of the Greater Houston Community Foundation. A little information about Renee. She leads the foundation's efforts to provide its donors with opportunities to participate in high engagement, high impact philanthropy. She leads a dynamic team of professionals dedicated to helping individuals, family businesses, um, foundations uh, and others achieve their goals by providing resources, including programming, content, research, uh, convening, and consulting. Renee is also a frequent speaker uh, on the subject of philanthropy for leading local and national philanthropic associations audiences. So I introduce Renee, who will introduce her panelists. It's all yours, Renee. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, it looks like we, we've hit break time, so hopefully we'll get everyone here in just a minute. Uh, as um, Dell pointed out, I am at the Greater Houston Community Foundation and very excited to moderate this panel of some really wonderful uh, next-gen alumni that are affiliated with the foundation and are leaders in our community. Um, you have all of their bios in your program, so I'm not going to go through each individual uh, bio, but you have Rob Galtney here to my immediate left, who was in our founding Next Generation class in 2011. Uh, Jennifer Laporte, who was in our Next Gen class of 2014. Um, Bryn Deerhood, who also was in the 2014 class. And Ben Brown, who was in our 2013 class. Um, and so just to give you a little bit of context for why the Community Foundation is engaged in working with the next generation in philanthropy, our mission is all about expanding philanthropic impact. And for us, that means working with donors, be they individuals, families, businesses, foundations, to help achieve their philanthropic goals. And when I joined the foundation in 2010, as I had conversations with our largest donors about what they really were concerned about for the future of philanthropy and how the foundation could add value for them, the number one thing on everyone's mind was, will the next generation be as philanthropic as the generation that we currently have in leadership and philanthropy? Because we all know that in Houston, part of what has made us a really vibrant community is having a philanthropic tradition that has helped to really build incredible civic infrastructure and institutions in our community that really help us have a brighter community. So we as a foundation really began to invest in building our capacity to engage the next generation and to work multi-generationally with families. And we started a program in 2011 focused on developing resources for the next generation. It started as a committee, and now uh, in 2018, we've had seven years of graduates from the Next Generation Donor Institute, which is really a leadership institute focused on developing and understanding among the next generation for those who are going to be stewarding really significant philanthropy of what it means to be a strategic donor, how to really think about the legacy of their families and the legacy that they want to create and how to do that in a responsible way and to bring peer network and, and resources uh, together in order to have that experience. And so today you're going to get to hear from our next generation alumni. These are four of the most engaged, I would say, of the hundred, but we're really fortunate that most of the alumni stay engaged with the foundation and stay engaged with the community and make a difference. Um, so we're going to start with just really understanding a little bit about what brought you into philanthropy and would love to hear about how you got engaged and what motivates you to continue to give your time, your talent, and your treasure. So um, Rob, we'll start with you. Sure. Uh, well, as far as what uh, motivates me, it's kind of something I was thrust into. Uh, I'm involved in, uh, we have kind of a nascent family foundation uh, that, uh, that we're, we're still you know, trying to, to put the bones on. Uh, so I am not the, uh, the inspirational speaker, but the aspirational speaker. And um, so as part of kind of learning what, uh, you know, what I need to, to develop and what skill set I need to do that, um, I got involved with the Next Gen class, uh, went through the course in 2011, um, and uh, found that to be pretty rewarding. Uh, but the follow-up since then uh, has been good. Uh, we did a, uh, our group formed a, a giving circle where we uh, basically solicited requests from, I don't know, 30 different charities, uh, evaluated those and selected a winner, uh, which, you know, uh, albeit kind of, um, you know, small dollars, uh, it's the, 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 the real deal process. And that's, what, that's, that's what's most important to me to learn uh, and to develop is to, to have a, you know, to have a process, to have a, um, you know, a way, kind of a framework to evaluate uh, organizations, and then to follow up and monitor the progress, 
uh, of, of the, the gifts. So uh, that's something that, that I'm still learning about and something that, that, uh, that I want to integrate into to my own giving. Uh, thinking strategically is important, thinking about uh, the whole concept of impact-based uh, giving uh, and moving beyond affinity giving, which is where myself and I'm sure a lot of people end up defaulting to you give to your schools, colleges, uh, churches, uh, faith-based organizations, which is great, but uh, you know, it should, uh, my, my aspiration is to be more purposeful uh, in doing that. So that's, that's, that's where I'm coming from. Great, thank you. Jennifer. Um, I'm lucky to come from a long line of people who have seen the benefit in giving back to Houston. And so in that, I got to watch my grandparents um, and tag along with them on site visits. And I didn't really understand what I was going along to, um, but I think that that was important, that they led by example. My uncle served on, and all of my family serves on multiple boards, and so I saw his example, and then my mother's example of going out into the community and volunteering with different organizations. And so when it came time for my family's foundation to invite my generation into some of the decision-making process, um, I decided, my brother and I decided to take the next gen course. Um, and what continues to motivate me is my responsibility as a board member um, to do the best that I can with the money that we have. Um, and so constantly seeing what needs are out there in Houston, what needs are being met, what needs are underserved, um, is something that continues to motivate me and drive me uh, to continue this process. Great. Bryn, how about you? Um, so I'm coming from a little bit of a different perspective. My um, father, about 20 years ago, decided that he was going to give away half of his wealth. Um, and so we are very new to the process of, as a family, um, philanthropy in general, engaging those discussions and what that looks like in our family. Um, so we set up a donor advised fund at the Greater Houston Community Foundation and um, really uh, my dad and my mom were the first people that I really could look up to um, in the process of giving back and what that looks like. Um, my dad served on numerous boards and my uh, mom was uh, worked at United Way and uh, then was an engaged volunteer growing up um, chairing events and things of that nature. So um, when I moved back to Houston from Austin, I wanted to first of all engage um, in a different kind of network than I grew up in and get to know different people, but also um, really learn a lot about what that would look like for me being the next generation and uh, really getting that those discussions going with our family so that we're able to be purposeful um, in our decision making and really aligned in that. Um, and my brother took the class as well, so um, we were really just, we're new in starting those processes, but um, it's been a wonderful resource for us. Great. Ben, how about you? Great. I'll go last, and I'll try not to be repetitive. Um, um, first, I, um, I'm blessed to be a Houstonian. I'm blessed to be a fifth-generation Houstonian. And with that, I just have a lot of passion for our city. Um, it's tied directly to my career. I love the spirit of our city, the diversity of our city, the welcomingness of our city. And it means a lot to me. And growing up, it was just instilled in me through my parents that uh, we need to do our part to give back to uh, what the city has brought in us. I'm an ultimate homer. I love when the Astros win the World Series. <laughs> I hate when the Texans are not very good um, and our star quarterback gets hurt. Um, but so it, when I was growing up, um, we, we did our best to get involved through community service. Then when I graduated from college, I was introduced to a, a nonprofit organization by the name of Casa de Esperanza, and um, it's a great local charity that provides shelter for children that are um, that really need a second chance at life. And that really inspired me to do more, and that really inspired me to try to learn more about philanthropy and the strategic approach of it, uh, and more than you know, giving money to a, a gala or playing in the golf tournament, which is important, but I wanted to try to take a deeper dive and. The Greater Houston Community Foundation enabled me to do that through their, their Next Gen Institute platform. And through things like the Giving Circle, which Rob spoke on, I could really look at it through a, through a different lens and why do I want to give to this organization? 
uh, and evaluate them from a management perspective, from a financial perspective, and, and what they are really doing for our community. So um, that, um, the, the CASA triggered me, and, and, and Greater Houston Community Foundation gave me a, a platform to, to kind of have a, a better outlook on my future philanthropy goals. Great. Well, thank you all for sharing and, and getting us a sense of what brought you to the table and what you're continuing to be motivated by. So everyone on this panel is working with their family in some way in philanthropy. And we all know just as in family business and family philanthropy, there are both joys and challenges in that experience. Um, so Jennifer, start off a little bit and let us know with, with five generations of family having been dedicated to philanthropy and that long tradition, what do you see as some of the joys and challenges that you're facing as a next generation voice? Um, so the greatest joy is being able to work with um, my mother's generation and my generation. They're 13 in my generation. They're three in her generation. And to be able to come together and not worrying about who's hosting Easter or something like that, but really work to benefit Houston and for the greater good um, has been uh, probably the largest joy is just having those times set aside to do that. Um, there are many challenges working with family. Um, as everyone is very aware of. Um, the biggest challenge that I see for our foundation right now is going from my grandparents um, to three, and then my generation will be 13. And so um, trying to look at how our foundation's decisions are made, um, how that will change over time. Um, so I guess you know, corporate govern or the governance mm -hmm. of our foundation is um, you know, you can plan for everything and you can set it up, um, but there are always the what ifs and the hiccups that come along the way. Um, uh, another challenge, I think, is that um, my brother and I took this class uh, to equip ourselves and to learn more about philanthropy, and we kind of came in guns blazing, saying, you know, this is what we've learned, this is how we're going to do it, this is great, um, and learning to kind of sit back and learn from my parents' generation as to how they do things um, and assimilate what we've learned into um, kind of the way that things have been done in the past. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there are different perspectives between the two generations. And Absolutely. Looking at how to reconcile those is an ongoing process. Yeah. So, Bren, as you, as you mentioned, you're in, I'm sorry, were you, did you want to comment? Mm -hmm. Okay. Bren, you, you mentioned you all are newer to philanthropy. So talk about how you've worked together as a family and, and what that experience has been like. Right. So the, um, the joys are, for, from our end, are very similar in, to Jennifer's as well, where we are just feel very fortunate to be able to be in a place now where we're able to give back and be able to hone in on our passions and... Um, and, and really feel like you're making a difference. Um, and being able to do that as a family has just been a really great thing for us. Um, we sat, we've we sat down with the Greater Houston Community Foundation multiple times and they've led us in kind of exercises um, and, and just planning for the future for what that looks like for our donor advice fund as a family. Um, and those have been very engaging and honestly so beneficial because um, as I mentioned, we really are a continual work in progress as a family and figuring out what our mission would be, um, what we're passionate about. Um, and they they really would sit down with us and we'd be able to, as a, as a unit, um, talk about we're, what we're passionate about and why we're passionate about those things. And it was neat to see uh, common threads throughout our family, um, even though we each are gifted in different ways. My sister's a special needs teacher, so she's very passionate about special needs. My um, dad's dad passed away when he was one, and so um, he's really passionate about um, giving back to kids that might not have a, a strong parental figures in their family, because that was a part of his story. Um, and as a whole, our family, different passions that we have, a lot of them are children based and um, based around our faith, which has been really neat to see um, and engage in that way. Um, the challenges, like I said, uh, we it, it is very much an evolving discussion and we are new at this. And so um, since my brother, sister and I are the first really generation, next generation, um, I have a five week old and my brother has two kids and so we're now starting those discussions on how to engage our children because it's going to be a, a continual process. Um, and, and in that, bringing in uh, my husband and my brother's um, 
wife and um, seeing that giving is an obedience for us personally, how that fits in um, and giving aside from our family. Um, so so a, a, lot of, a lot of rich topics there to explore yes. and, and to evolve. But one of the things I've appreciated working with both of you is also the fact that you also see volunteering as part of family giving. And so I know, Bren, I've seen your mom take your niece on site visits with us and go volunteer together to really inculcate those habits. And Jennifer, you've been engaged with your children in the family giving circle. Maybe you can comment on that just for a second to, so people can have an understanding of when we talk about family engagement, what that looks like. Um, so our foundation is set up that it goes through my mother's line and those that want to participate can. And so I feel a great responsibility um, because our foundation is in perpetuity to prepare my children to take on that mantle should they choose to. Um, my children are still young, um, but I was kind of taught by example. And so um, I really wanted to start at a young age um, giving them the opportunities to see what it means to give back. Um, so they, uh, the Center for Family Philanthropy started two years ago. Absolutely. Um, and uh, they, it is a wonderful, I feel a wonderful opportunity for my children. It is led by high school students um, from members of uh, the center. Um, they choose the topic and they help make the decisions um, where our uh, money goes at the end of the year. And so for my children to see teenagers taking the lead, um, I think is great in kind of leadership development, um, but also they're being exposed to volunteering opportunities throughout the city. Um, and for one, we went into Zumba in a public school on one Saturday morning, and my son, who's almost nine, was like, Mom, it's really cold in here. I mean, can't they turn on the heat? And I said, well, no, they can't. They don't have heat. Um, this is how a lot of students and children, you know, students in Houston go to school. Their cafeteria doesn't have heat. And so just the exposure has been, um, I think, very important for my little ones. Thanks. Any comments from you, Ben or Rob, about working as a family in philanthropy? Well, my experience is we're, we're a little backwards uh, on how we're approaching it. My, my, my parents have always been philanthropic, and, um, but we've, they've really, really had a structure and um, my brother, sister-in-law, and I have all taken the class, and now we are talking to our folks and saying, hey, we really need to sit down and figure out what our, what our goals are, and not just, um, you know, we all get bombarded by, by friends that are, that are hosting something and, and, and having to give to the school or, or, or church. But, you know, again, we're, we'd like to, and what I'm, I'm doing with my generation is trying to engage my parents to figure out what that structure is and what our mission as a family is going to be as it relates to philanthropy. It's challenging. Uh, in some ways, I'm envious of the previous panel because I, I spend my, my working hours working in a family business where it's easier to define success, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's an investment or a company. Uh, you can lay down clear markers and you know if you've achieved your, your objective. It's much squishier on the philanthropy th side. And to some extent, I've kind of come around to the uh, realization that you, that, that you really need to have, as Ben mentioned, goals, and you need to have you know, milestones, and it's an incremental process. And that's something that I want to uh, start you know, uh, uh, instituting within my own family, uh, my brothers uh, and my parents. So um, I can really echo that it's, it's very challenging. Yeah, I can see that. Well, because of those challenges, what resources have been helpful to you in this process of knowing that working on family philanthropy is a long-term game and process? It's not going to be changing overnight. Um, so what, what sort of resources do you look for? What kind of networks have been helpful to you as you're trying to evolve and develop your own practice? Ben, we'll start with you. Well, I'll plug the Greater Houston Community Foundation. Uh, no, uh, in all seriousness, I... Um, you know, when I took the class in 2013, I didn't really know what my, what my thought process was going to be. And the really thing that uh, was um, the most important thing and the thing that I've treasured, and Rob touched on it briefly, is, is this giving circle that we've created at the Community Foundation with the Next Gen Institute alums. And um, uh, like Rob mentioned, every year about 30 of us get together and we figure out what, what um, what we want to focus on in, 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 our, um, in our city. And we see where the areas of need are. 
And then we're, we, we take a deep dive into those areas. We, we offer RFP and we, we, we get those proposals back and we, you know, we'll get 40 plus proposals back and a group of peers will go in and we'll vet those proposals. And what I like about it is the dialogue that I can share with, with people that are my age and peers that kind of share the same goals. And we'll, we'll go through those proposals and we'll pick three finalists and then we'll go and we'll do site visits for those three finalists. And, and for me, that's where I get inspired. I get inspired seeing the people that ha have the boots on the ground that really are making the real dis difference in our community. And some of the stories that we've heard from those site visits are just will stay with me forever. Uh, and then we have the ability to, to go in and pick one group that we'll select. And the monetary contribution that we make to these, these organizations, it's not it's not you know, that significant in the scheme of things, but what's important is the process that we go through. The process um, that we go through has hopefully made be, me a better citizen. Uh, it's made me a better uh, person as I, I focus on philanthropy. It's made me a better board member for, uh, for, for a board that I serve on. Uh, to go in and, and peel back more layers of the onion and figure out how we can can make a change in seeing what, what we've seen through the Giving Circle, some of the good things uh, that, m that mom nonprofits have and then some of the things that, uh, they, that, that they, need, they need help with. So the Giving Circle, I think, has been the best tool for me. That's um, great to hear. And Bryn, you come from a unique perspective because you both serve and have served in a nonprofit role uh, in your day job and you've been a participant and, and a giver in philanthropy. So what resources have been helpful to you with those multiple hats that you wear? Wow, that's a great question. Um, so the next gen class was was tremendously helpful for me um, in the early stages of um, working in nonprofit, a nonprofit and finding the balance of being uh, both a donor and um, somebody that's asking for money, um, and, and being able to do both of those or understand both sides of those things has been uh, vastly helpful, I believe, in my career. But um, the next gen giving uh, or the next gen class was um, incredibly helpful just with all of the resources that they gave us. They would bring in speakers um, every week and just being able to network with people that are passionate about the same things that um, I'm passionate about, which is um, really just changing our city for the better. Um, and so the resources through the cl class were incredibly helpful. And then I've just found that um, being able to ask for help and ask for help from people that have done it before me um, has been a tremendous resource. There have been people that have really taken me under their wing, um, both professionally and personally, um, that have uh, always given me um, resources, rather, whether it's for um, my career or for um, me figuring out personally what uh, the next steps are f for us giving as a family. Great. Rob, any other resources you want to mention that you've relied on along the way? Have your peers been important to you as you think about giving and philanthropy? Uh, you know, I mean, I think that um, that's something that I haven't utilized as much as I, as I could have. Uh, in addition to the kind of the concrete programs and, and stuff that the Community Foundation uh, puts together, it's just a great uh, community base and a great a great way to, uh, you know, if I have a question about some area of philanthropy, I can quickly pick up the phone and figure out who to call. Um, so that, that's something that, um, that's a tool that I have that I need to use more often. Great. Jennifer, what about you? Um, I find my peer network to be very helpful um, and to um, the Greater Houston Community Foundation has helped me to start developing that network because um, it's been very useful to be able to go to other next gens on other foundation boards and say, okay, we're having this problem. How, have, how has your foundation tackled it? Or what are some missteps that you've had? Um, and kind of learn from them um, because we are still fairly young and bringing on um, our generation. Um, there are many other foundations that have tried and failed and tried and succeeded. Um, so, uh, my peer network, I think, is a huge resource, but also um, earlier this year, uh, Greater Houston Community Foundation paired with an organization called the Philanthropy Workshop. And we spent um, two days taking a deeper dive into strategic and impact giving. Um, and the people um, that took the class with me, um, I now 
you know, really look heavily to them and kind of what they're doing and their takeaways from that class. Um, I think for all of us, it, it asked, it opened up a lot more questions to how we want to give and how we should be giving. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so philanthropy comes in a lot of different forms. One of the things I wanted to explore with you is what structure you use for your philanthropy. And so some of you have said it's not yet organized yet. Some of you, um, Jennifer, you have a foundation that's been going on for many years. Brynn, you started a donor advice fund. So I think it'd be helpful for each of you to just touch on briefly what you see as the benefits of either having a structure in place or not yet having one and what you're thinking about in that way. So Brynn, maybe you can start off with you know, being new to philanthropy and a donor advice fund, how have you found that structure for your family? So um, with our donor advice fund, we uh, recently have made my siblings and myself, um, we are all now advisors on the fund. So we are able to request grants um, for different nonprofits in the area or in the world really through the foundation. Um, but we do have a process, a little bit more of a formal process to do that as a family so that we're all kind of not just giving individually, that we're able to still do that as a unit and be aware of what, what impact we're making um, as a family. So um, basically we will just let everyone know and, and my dad needs to approve the gift, but um, it's, he's never not approved of a gift. So our process is really just um, going through the family, making sure people are aware of what we're giving back to. And because of that, it's, um, it's really neat because now we're able to engage with each other about um, why we're wanting to make those gifts. Um, we're exposed to new um, nonprofits and ministries in the area that we might not have, would have known that you know, our family has been, been involved in um, if we weren't discussing that giving. And so you're really able to see the, the footprint that you're making as a family. Um, and it's really neat to see that the impact that you're making. So ours isn't very formal because it is a donor advice fund and we are new at this, as I've said. So that process is continuing to evolve for us. But um, right now in the early stages, that's what's worked best for us. Yeah, and there's just some flexibility there in terms of not having a mandatory payout rate every year and being able to exactly. give into the fund when you when you want to right. for because of wealth events or tax planning, but not having a certain amount of grants you have to give um, each year. Although I will say that most people who have donor advice funds at the Community Foundation give very generously, so our payout rate overall tends to be upwards of 15 to 25 percent. Mm -hmm. um, and that's different than a private foundation. So Jennifer, maybe reflect a little bit on, on what it's like to be part of a private foundation structure. Um, so the nice thing about having a private foundation structure is that there is a lot of structure set out initially. Um, we accept grant applications and review those throughout the year um, to make our decisions. We have a mission. Um, ours is very loosely based, which is good and bad, um, in that it's not highly specific, so there is a lot of leeway. Um, but as Bryn said, you know, they find an organization that they want to support and they kind of talk about it with their family. Ours, unfortunately, is not that easy. Um, there is, you know, a large discussion. Um, the organization is usually invited to present, um, and then it, there is kind of a vote. What uh, Going back to one of the earlier questions, the challenges, I think um, with three trustees, uh, their giving is a lot more weighted on kind of relationship giving. Um, organizations that they know, uh, friends on boards of organizations that they know, know to come to them. Um, in my generation, I think that there will be a movement away from that simply because there are more of us um, and that we're not going to be able to do that as well. But also, um, I think that my generation, um, there is more of an emphasis on impact and wanting to make a difference and wanting to see your dollars go further um, in helping the community. And so I think that we will take on, professional is not the right term, but a more business-like approach to our giving um, going forward in my generation. Thanks. And that, that's a, a transition that we're seeing happen in many foundations as people, particularly as assets grow and generations of family grow, it can just become more difficult to manage it if there's not really formal goals and areas of interest to, because there will be so many grant proposals to look at if you're just serving all of Houston. Rob, any comments on structure? Uh, no, I've, I've uh, used a little bit of both. Um, we have a family foundation uh, in addition to 
uh, the uh, donor advised funds that myself and, and uh, my brothers, we all individually have our own uh, funds, which uh, is a, um, you, you know, lets you kind of put your personal touch on it. Uh, but um, there's something to be said for the foundation, for the structure, and for, you know, if for even the mandatory uh, donations, because it, it forces the conversation every year. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, it's, it's up to everyone to make their own decisions Absolutely. on that. But those, I think we've addressed the, the pros and cons pretty well. Great. Ben, any comments or are you good? I'm good. Really covered it. Okay. Yeah. And we find really today people have many vehicles. So we work with a lot of donors, as Rob was mentioning, may have a family foundation, may also have a donor advised fund, might be giving to a 501c4 to impact social change, might need a private operating foundation if they want to do project-based giving. So for us, it's really important when thinking about what structure you want to think more about the motivation and the goals that you have and the kind of flexibility and then the structure follows, which is sort of different than the way things used to be in the past. Um, so uh, we're going to move, I think, to Q and A, and we're getting so while while we're getting there, one of the things, one of the questions we often hear from people, so I'll put it out there while we're getting these, is what made it the right time for you to take the Next Gen Donor Institute? When people are looking at it, they'll say, "Well, I don't know if I'm ready yet. Am I too young? Do I need to be older? Do I need to have a formal board role?" So, so what was the, in the sense, what made it the right time for you all? Because you all four took it, I think, for different reasons. Well, for me, is when it was free. <laughs> now they charge. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, um, around 2013, I was asked to be on a, a board, and I didn't want to be that young guy in the back that didn't add any value to the board. Um, and so I wanted to learn more. I wanted to educate myself and be tooled with some things that will make that, that would make me a, a good uh, board member. And um, the the institute provided that. That's great. And now that you mentioned being on a board, let's talk, we're going to get to this question in one minute, but let's talk about several of you are on board. So if you can reflect a little bit, what is it like to be a younger person on a, on a board and nonprofit? And what have you found to be challenges with that? How have you managed it? Jennifer, you're on multiple boards. Do you want to say anything about that? Um, sure. Uh, I, I really enjoy uh, board participation and being on a board. Um, there are some boards where I feel like there is um, a lot to learn, and there are a lot of people sitting on that board um, that are wonderful mentors, and um, that I'm really learning in more of a learning position than a leading position. And then I have some another board or two um, where my experience being part of a family foundation um, and the development aspect of that is very helpful to that board in their fundraising. And um, so I'm able to be more of an advisor in that role. Um, so uh, I enjoy the give and take um, mm -hmm. of, of being uh, serving on these boards. Any, anyone else on that topic? Are you kidding? You know, I, I, at first, I can tell you it was a little intimidating. Um, and I'm you know, blessed to serve on a board with a lot of great community leaders. and. Um, I just I didn't I didn't want to I didn't want to embarrass myself um, and luckily you know through the institute I don't think I have and um, and it took some time but now I'm uh, feel like I have a voice and I tell you it's been an initiative of this specific board to bring in younger people because um, they need that younger next generation voice and I think the the good boards of today are are, are really pushing that as, as best they can. That's great. And, and I skipped around. I apologize for that. But does, does anyone else want to comment on why was it the right time for you to take Next Gen when you did or sort of what the trigger was? Um, my trigger was uh, that the trustees were opening um, uh, the doors to my generation. And my brother and I felt like we needed to be better equipped to take on that role. Um, but on the other hand, um, my husband and I were at an age where we were getting lots of requests from friends to t support different organizations, and our giving was all over the place. We had never sat down and talked about how much we want to give as a whole. Um, where, do we have specific interests that we want to focus on? And so taking this class, while it prepared me to take on a role in a foundation, it also really helped us, and it's definitely still a work in progress 
but looking personally at my giving and um, how my husband and I and our family um, want to uh, give as well. Great. Rob or Bryn? I feel like I've kind of already discussed it, but okay. briefly, my, um, I was, I had just moved back to Houston from Austin and um, was definitely one of the younger ones in my class, uh, but I was just eager to learn. I was hungry to, to um, be given some resources and to network with some new people in the area. Um, and uh, my husband and I, separate from um, giving with through my family, we view giving as just an obedience. And so, um, like Jennifer said, being able to hone in on that um, and be able to work through that as a couple separate from our, um, my family was just a, a tremendous asset for us as well. Great. Well, yeah, so we, go ahead and no, then we'll get to these two audience pretty, questions. I was going to say pretty simple. I, I had a donor advised fund at the time uh, that I'm, I'm not sure I even knew, uh, you know, how to use. Right. Uh, so it was an, a, a logical uh, uh, next jump to, to, to join the class. Thank you. So we have a couple of questions from the audience um, for Jennifer, but also for others. Um, there was the question of how do you feel that exposure for your children at a young age will help bring awareness of appreciation of what they do have in terms of the kind of life and resources that they have? I, I, I surely hope so. Um, I, we're very lucky to attend the schools we do, to live in the house that we do, to have food on our table every day. And so I, I, I sincerely hope that by exposing them, I'm helping to form kind of their whole self, um, being thankful for what they have and seeing, you know, where they can help and the lack elsewhere. So, yeah. Great. Thanks. Um, we also have the question of, in, in terms of trying to make philanthropy meaningful for family members and impactful, how many themes do you think you can realistically pursue? And I, I think what they mean by that is sort of how many focus areas, how many big areas of giving. So anybody want to comment on that? Well, at our foundation, our overarching mission is the betterment of Houston. So if you look at that, we could go into human trafficking, we could go into poverty, we could go into homelessness, we can go into veteran support. Um, so, and we, in the arts, and uh, we definitely do try to touch all aspects of Houston um, and are working um, to be more and more aware of kind of what areas we are focusing on. Um, we still want to serve all of Houston, and I think that you can, um, but you know, there's the other strategy where you really do hone in on one um, area and really try to make a difference. Um, the mission of our foundation, though, is to make a difference in Houston. Regardless of how many you choose, I think it's important to, to at least identify them, whether it's one or five, uh, so that you start with issues and themes and then work from there, uh, because otherwise you don't have any, any focus. Yeah. And I mean, in our experience in advising families, it starts with values and interests and what you really care about and hopefully also understanding also where the need is and the intersection of those two. And then, as you say, trying to decide, can you go deep in some areas that you can really impact over time? And, and for some people, that's one or two focus areas. For others, it may be multiple focus areas, but not always going it alone. So one of the great things that we have in Houston is this broad philanthropic community. So it's not always about making a difference just one family at a time, but we're seeing a lot more collaboration among families, whether it's between family foundations or individual donors who say, I want to make a difference in youth homelessness or human trafficking or education. And I know that issue area is very broad and I'm not going to be able to learn about it all myself. So I'm going to connect with other donors and other foundations to make a difference. And, and in part, that's been one of the joys of working on disaster relief, which is also something the Community Foundation has been involved in, is that we've had the whole philanthropic community helping with the Hurricane Harvey Relief Fund. So I think that's a piece that can get missed is that it's philanthropy doesn't always mean going it alone, but it can also mean collaborating with others. And I know y'all have experienced that through the giving circle and in other ways. So I don't know if anybody wants to comment on collaboration. I think you covered. I think that the biggest thing is learning about the different themes out there. Um, you know, personally, um, through the giving circle, we focused on human trafficking one year. And I, honestly, I was just naive to that subject matter. I didn't know um, that, unfortunately, Houston is a hub of human trafficking. And uh, it inspired me. And that's, that's certainly one of the sectors that I want to continue to focus on. And so 
I just say, you know, go out there through whatever platform to learn and vet out as many different uh, segment areas as you can. Mm -hmm. So exposure is important. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Well, I think we'll, we'll take it as a wrap there because we don't seem to have any more questions. And I've got a red light, so that's good timing. So please join me in thanking our panel for sharing their experience.